This is Anthony P. here at National Taiwan Normal University in beautiful Taiwan. NTNU is one of the four oldest campuses in Taiwan, and it's known for its research and its friendliness to international students studying Mandarin. I'm here today to give one of my super clear seminars on business English. Yeah, <laughs> thank you, thank you. How will you use business English? Similarly, you'll use it to communicate effectively. Effective communication is just clear, simple English that everyone can understand quickly. Um, there's no, uh, my, the thing I like to say is, will you send three emails or one? One email is effective, three emails means maybe you could be more clear. Business English builds trust. If you talk formally, that builds trust. If you talk informally, you maybe uh, don't make those connections. You don't network effectively. Shows your expertise. Maybe you want to sell a product or a service. And business English is specific. Similar to academic English, uh, business English is specific. And specific language saves time by minimizing confusion. It's kind of a recap of this section. Saves time by minimizing confusion. I like to walk, sorry. Um, so on the left, we have informal English. Uh, informal English can be grammatically correct. It can be kind, it can be many things, but there are some differences. So, I'm Mike. That's informal. It's okay, right? I'm Anthony, I'm Stacy, I'm Trevor. That's okay, but it's informal. What did you say? It's a little informal. We'll talk about why. This is one of my favorite ones. The word what is actually really confusing in English. What means maybe I didn't hear you, I don't understand you, right? It could mean many things. So what can be a little informal. Uh, we were successful last year. Well, successful, I don't know what that means. It's a good thing, but how successful? Business English is specific. And one more, hi boss, I'm not coming to work on Friday. That's <laughs> grammatically, that's a good sentence, but uh, culturally it's very informal. So here's a business English version. My name is Michael, please call me Mike. So you get two chances to say your name. I would always say, my name is Anthony, please call me Anthony. Not Tony, not Anthony, not maybe a nickname. So you can say your name twice. Most of you probably have two names, one in English, one in Chinese. If you're speaking with multiple people from different countries, you can say, my name is your Chinese name, please call me Mike. So you say both your Chinese name, then your English name. That way, if there are some Chinese speakers, they hear your Chinese name. And if there's no Chinese speakers, they get to learn your Chinese name and learn your English name. I don't like to ignore people's Chinese names. Um, I think it's important that foreigners learn both of your names. Um, so I would always say both. Uh, what did you say? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. Could you please repeat your last point? See how clear that is? I know now, I wasn't speaking loud enough. <laughs> I couldn't hear you. Whereas, what did you say? I don't know what my action should be. I don't know what I should do as the presenter. What did you say was not clear? We were successful last year. Q3 and 4 saw 40% increased profits respectively. So both Q3 and Q4 individually saw 40% increased profits. Successful could be 10% increased profits, 80% increased profits, five. So with 40%, you have the time, Q3 and Q4, so the end of the year, both saw increased profits. So it's much more specific. Hi boss, I'm not coming to work on Friday. Well, that's a little, that's a little obvious, right? Good morning, Michael, could I talk to you about taking Friday off of work? So it's opening a conversation. You're not telling your boss, I'm leaving. You're saying, can we discuss this? Maybe your boss says, Monday is better. Can you take Monday off of work? It opens a kind discussion. All right, specific. And this is kind of the the theme for today. You are all in university, right? You all here work in a university, study in a university. Similar to academic English, 
Business English is specific. When you write a research paper, you're specific. When you give an email, you're specific. When you're in a business setting, we want you to be specific as well. Uh, business English has a clear pur purpose. So if you remember before, I said uh, the, um, sorry, here. So it has a purpose. Could you please repeat your last point? The purpose is I want you to repeat yourself. So when I say business English has a purpose, you say, what do you want the other person to know? Or what do you want the other person to do? What actions do you want the other person to take? So for example, I'm sorry I couldn't hear you. Could you please repeat your last point? What do you want the other person to know? We can't hear you. What actions do you want them to take? Can you please repeat your last point? Similarly, we could say, oh, the what, the what's the problem here, right? Similarly, I'm sorry, I can't understand you. Could you please slow down? What do you want the other person to know? And what actions do you want the other person to make? Uh, some business English expressions. Expression number one, to stay on top of something. So they're on top of a mountain, to stay on top of something. Uh, any ideas what this means? Does anybody know? This means that you are paying attention to something and taking care of it. So I'm paying attention to my homework. I will do my homework tonight. I have a schedule. It will be completed. I will do it before the deadline to stay on top of something. So let's do some example sentences. I'm working on three different projects right now, but I'm on top of their deadlines. So I'm busy. I've got three projects, but it's okay. I have a schedule and I'm going to get them done. So supervisors will often ask, like, hey, where are you on this project? Well, we're communicating with the buyer, but we're on top of the, on top of the sale. It's, it's a low stress. I'm on top of it. No worries. Right? No worries. You're at the top of the mountain. We're good. We're good. Uh, example sentence. Oh, there we go. I'm not going to miss the deadline. I'm not going to miss the deadlines. Example sentence number two. Brian is on top of bringing the pizza to the next workshop. We love Brian. We love Brian because we love pizza. Uh, it's a joke. So uh, Brian is on top of it. We know he's uh, in charge. If someone's on top of it, they're in charge. Brian is responsible. Similarly, when I said you can say on it, I'm on it, you might hear that as well, and that comes from the same root. So, uh, Anthony, can you go get my shoes? On it. Uh, question. Who can answer this question? Have you reached out to, these, uh, to the three suppliers? With this expression, how would you answer that? Anybody? Maybe I'm on top of it. Yeah, I'm on top of it. I'm on top of it. Uh, many ways to say this. Have you reached those players? Yeah, I talked to them last week. I'm on it. I've been on it for two months. Right? I've been taking care of it for two months. Yeah, I'm on top of it. It's, again, this, this is lowering your supervisor's stress. Right? Have you reached out to the suppliers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm on it. We're good. Uh, question. What have you had trouble staying on top of this semester. What have you had trouble staying on top of this semester? Anybody? Get a little personal here. Maybe you haven't exercised enough. I haven't stayed on top of my physical health. Maybe you've been eating too much sugar. I haven't stayed on top of my diet. I haven't stayed on top of my homework, my assignments. Anybody want to give an example? I'm working on other business uh, programs or other people that work. Yeah? So what have you not been on top of? So I've been working on other important things. I haven't been on top of my... Yeah. 
my homework for this semester. Yeah, so I've been working on important projects, so I haven't been on top of my homework for this semester. So this is negative. I've had trouble staying on top of something. Yeah, good. Ooh. Any ideas? What's the expression? Yeah, this is soccer. This is the sport. What would the expression be? It's, if the ball is moving. Any ideas? It's to get the ball rolling. To get the ball rolling. Who knows what to get the ball rolling means? Anybody? Oh, you're so close. You're so close. To start. To start something. So can we get the ball rolling on the presentation? Can we get the ball rolling on the project, the paper? So you have a plan, but you have not started yet. Example sentence. Summer break will be here soon, so we need to get the ball rolling on the spring assessment survey. It means we have plans for the survey, but we haven't started the draft. We haven't sent it to the students. We haven't started to get the ball rolling. Example, oh yeah, we need to start making the survey. Example sentence number two, there it is. Brian, you're behind on some of your tasks. Can you get the ball rolling on the Samsung bid? This is really direct. This would be a supervisor talking to someone below them. Um, it's, it's almost rude. <laughs> you are behind on some of your tasks. This is very direct. Uh, but can you get the ball rolling on the Samsung bid? Can you start? Can you communicate? Can you send them an email? Same, a bid is when you want to offer somebody a service and they're going to buy your product. So this is um, maybe, could be marketing, could be, could be anything, could be a supply chain, could be microprocessors, could be many things. Elevator pitches. What's an elevator pitch? So this is a pitcher. He's pitching a ball. He's pitching a ball. A pitch is something fast. That's it. Elevator. What's an elevator? You go up. So the idea is you have a really short conversation with somebody about something important. You have 10 seconds. What do you say? Maybe you have a product to sell. Maybe you have an idea, a concern, uh, something. And you're going to tell somebody very quickly something very complicated. Tell me your research in 15 seconds. Right? You have a 30-page research paper. How do you do that in 15 seconds? Well, that's an elevator pitch. You need to be able to do that. So an elevator pitch is a short explanation of something. It could be an explanation of a product or a description uh, of your expertise. My name is Anthony, and I work for an editing company, and I give lectures and seminars around Taiwan on academic writing and professional development. My entire job, 10 seconds. We use elevator pitches when we are delivering ideas or introducing something. I just introduced myself. Why are elevator pitches important in business? You don't always have a lot of time, and you need to be clear and concise with your English. Long sentences don't always make sense. Often, short sentences are the way to go. Similarly, when you're writing a research paper, long sentences do not always make you sound smart. Sometimes it's confusing to have long sentences. If you have one paragraph and it's one sentence, that's difficult for me to understand. But if you have one paragraph with three sentences, that might be easier because your ideas are more clearly defined. All right. Elevator pitch for product or solution. This is the first one, and then we're gonna do an elevator pitch for a research idea or topic. They're almost the same, but the uh, uses are different. Start with your name, or your product name and category. Then you're gonna talk about the problem you are trying to solve. So why is this important? Why, is, why are we talking? What's the product? Uh, your proposed solution, and the key benefit of your solution. This is a very basic structure. Sometimes you'll use all of them, sometimes you won't. Um, 
I'll give you an example. My name is Anthony, and this is the Philips Presentation Clicker. Ooh. Pointing at a PowerPoint with your finger is slow, but this clicker has a built-in laser pointer that lets you point to any part of the screen from anywhere in the room. This increases your clarity and helps your audience follow your thinking without needing to obstruct your presentation. Obstruct means get in the way, so I don't have to stand over here and have the light in my eyes. I can point at obstruct from all the way over here, right? So that would be an elevator pitch for this product. Simple, elegant, we have a problem. Pointing at a PowerPoint with your finger is slow. That's the problem. I don't want to stand in front of the screen, but I also, I want to point to any part of the screen from anywhere in the room. That's the solution. That's what we want to be able to do. So if we break it down, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. There we go. So sentence one, your name, product, and category. So my name is Anthony, and this is the Philips presentation clicker. If you see how I'm like holding it up so you can all see it, if I did this, it's less clear. This is a part of business English, right? How do we present something? I, don't, I, want, you know, I want to hold it in front of you so you can see it. Pointing at a PowerPoint is slow, so that's the problem you are trying to attempt to solve. Proposed solution, this clicker has a laser. That's the solution. I have a laser in my hand, right? I can do it anywhere. Sorry again. And uh, this increases your clarity as it helps your audience follow your thinking without needing to obstruct your audience, your, uh, your presentation. This simple structure, you could do with anything, right? Why is that cup a good cup? Why was that restaurant a good restaurant? Why are these tables, why did you buy these tables? Well, they only have legs on the sides, so there's tons of open space underneath them. We don't want chairs to be hitting metal poles, so we have a whole open table underneath. Easy. You will write, in a minute, your own, your own pitch for something, so have some ideas in mind. If you don't have a good pitch for this, let's talk about uh, research papers. You are all writers. You're in school, so you write. Yeah, that's a part, that's a fact of your life. So how do we do it? Name and research project, uh, research subject, research title can be difficult because titles can be long, so maybe you don't want your title. So for example, when I was in school, I studied um, stalking behavior on campus. That's what I was, it's a, it was a sexual violence prevention field. So make it short, the problem statement, your study's methodology, that's hard, right? How do you say a methodology in, in, in a short sentence when a methodology is many, many pages? And then your results and conclusions. So we have a problem. Here's how we solved it. Here's where our results. Let's do an example. My name is Anthony, and I researched the effects that rising sea level temperatures had on crab species native to Taiwan. That's super fast, right, to get all that information. In recent years, sea temperatures have seen nearly two degrees Celsius rise around Taiwan. I measured crab populations in three regions over four years and determined that crab populations fell by nearly 60% over this period of time. This is almost like an abstract if you're really familiar with academic writing. Let's break it down. I gotta point this way. So, name and research subject. My name is Anthony, and I researched the effects that rising sea level temperatures had on crab species native to Taiwan. When do you say your name? If you have any doubt that someone in the room does not know your name, say your name, right? Just say it. If you know everybody and your best friends, okay, don't say your name. But if maybe we've met three times, oh, does she know my name? I don't know. My name is Anthony. Give them an extra chance. Uh, the effects that rising sea level temperatures have on, so we have rising sea level temperatures, so that's uh, climate change. Crab species, okay, crabs, more specific. To Taiwan, very specific. So in one sentence, I come from here right down to here. Short, sweet. 
In recent years, temperatures have seen nearly two degrees Celsius rise around Taiwan. Wow, problem. Two degrees Celsius is a lot for water temperatures. I measured crab populations over three regions over four years. So we have the time and the locations, great, and determined that crab populations fell by nearly 60%. Results and conclusions. If you write a paper, you might say this 30 times, 40 times, 50 times. This will be your, you should memorize it, right? This should be something that you can say with your eyes closed by yourself or in a room full of people. Similarly, when you're doing a product, ba -ba -ba -ba, I should be able to do this from memory. And that shows you're an expert, shows you're confident, it shows you're trustworthy. Wow, he knows his product. My name is Anthony, and this is the Philips Presentation Clicker. Pointing at your presentation is slow and time consuming, not word for word, but you get the idea. Yeah, slow and time consuming. Cool. Any questions so far? It's a lot of information. When you get good at this, this is how you're going to write emails. This same idea is how you're going to give a complicated idea, a business pitch, uh, questions, right? You can give information and deliver a complicated idea in a really short amount of time and words. And it doesn't always need to be three or four sentences. Let's jump through this. Activity. Write an elevator pitch two to four sentences, selling a product, or explaining a research topic. And if you would like maybe some feedback or some fun, you can come up here and give your pitch to the class. UniEdit provides English editing and translation services to Asia's top universities. Please visit the UniEdit website link below for details about UniEdit's English editing services for your research manuscripts.